All right, I guess uh, we are live uh, now. So um, welcome everyone uh, to our online Quantum Chaos Seminar. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, we are kind of at the end of, of the fall series. We just have a few weeks left. Um, <clears throat> so I'll just mention as usual that uh, we encourage people to uh, interact with, with us and with the speakers through the chat and just um, ask questions. You can ask questions throughout the talk and, and make any comments and, and we'll transfer those to the speaker. Um, so today we are pleased to have uh, Diego Wisniaki from University of Buenos Aires as our speaker. Uh, Diego is an expert in the field of quantum chaos and particularly in the theory of Los Mirecos. Um, he did his PhD in Buenos Aires and then worked at uh, Conea in Argentina and also at the University Autónoma in Madrid um, before becoming a professor at the University of Buenos Aires in 2005. Um, so on a, on a personal note, Diego was uh, my advisor and mentor during my PhD. And so it's really a, a great pleasure for me particularly to have him uh, give a talk in this series. So thank you, Diego. Uh, welcome and you can start whenever you want. Okay. There is there is some delay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So thanks, thanks Pablo and Peter for for the invitation. I am very happy to talk here in this uh, very wonderful series of uh, lectures. Okay. So I will start. Okay. So. So today I will, I will talk about the signature of quantum chaos transition in the small systems and more. Okay, so let me start with some key ideas, some questions. I, will, I want to, to discuss first the, the forest and then I, go, I will go to the trees, okay? They, I will go to the decades. So, let me let me start uh, discussing a little bit about the the title. Okay, in the in the title, I have the words of quantum chaos, and also, and all of you know, quantum chaos essentially is related with this uh, spectral distribution. Okay, the universality of a spectral distribution. But in the in the title, I have also the the word small system, and I mean about small system is system with small number of state in the Hilbert space. And the first question that I want to, 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 to ask during my, my, my talk, is that there is an inconsistency in the title, okay? Because in system with a very small number of, in the Hilbert space, it's not, it is not possible to make spectral distribution. Question number two, okay, this is, uh, very simple one dimension uh, map, classical map. Okay, in this plot, you can see that the system, the, 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 there is a regular motion in this, in this case. And this system has a, a, a parameter that I can change. Okay, and if I change this parameter, okay, I can destroy the tori, okay and start the, the chaos start to grow, okay? And then I essentially, if the parameter is, is it's very big, I, the, the whole phase space has chaotic behavior. So I show you the integrability to chaos transition in this very small, in this very simple system, classical system. And the first question is how can I gauge gauge this transition in quantum mechanics, okay? And the answer, the, the first answer of this question was done in, this, in the 80s, in the 90s, with the birth of the quantum chaos subject, with the community, okay? And essentially, what people found is that there is a relation in, between the distribution of, of the Eigen energy, of the spectra, and the connection with the random matrix theory. Okay, and for example, here, this, this paper of Oriol Bojigas of uh, 1982, 
he showed that the nearest neighbor distribution for the Sinai billiard, one of the paradigmatic system of quantum chaos, behaves like the Gaussian orthogonal, orthogonal ensemble, okay? But I want to go further, and I want to ask if I can connect spectral statistics with some dynamical property of the system, okay? Like some mean value of some operator. There's, uh, Question number three. Oh, sorry. Let's suppose that I want to know some quantum chaos measure of, of this uh, chain. Okay. You this chain is huge, has many spins. And if I am an experimentalist, probably I cannot control so many particles. And if I am a theoretician, my laptop cannot diagonalize this, this uh, system, this, this the Hamiltonian, the Hamiltonian of the system. So I ask if I can learn something of a small system with the same type of interaction, okay? This is the, the, the third question that I want to, to ask. And the last question, okay, is let's suppose that I want to control this system, okay? The in, the in 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 color is the environment. Okay, so I want to address, for example, the first spin. Okay, I want to do something. Okay, to 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 go from state zero to state one. And I am a good experimentalist. Okay, and I can isolate my chain. Okay, and now I want to control the first spin, but now the environment of my system of the first pins is the reminder of the chain. And the question that I want to know, if, if, if I can characterize such a small environment, local environment, and what is the relation of the characteristics of this small environment with the control, okay? I, of course, I, I will not give a definite answer of all these questions, but I will give you insight of all this stuff, okay? So let's go to the trees, okay? Let's, I, I divided the, the talk in two parts, okay? The first part of the talk, I will show you that the long time regime of the out of time order correlators that many people talk in this uh, series of, of, of lecture of this quantum chaos, of 20, 2020, I will show that the long time regime are very nice measure of the integrability to chaos transition. In the second part, I will show the same that the long time of the purity, now I take a part, I, I will take a chain, I will take a part of the chain as my system, I measure the purity and I will say, I will show that this purity, this is a very nice quantity that measure the, uh, tra the, the, the chaos transition, the quantum chaos transition. And, uh, and I will show you the relation of this measure with control, okay? So if, if you, one, one important point, I, I, I close the, because there is a delay. So I close the, if, if you want to ask my a question, move your hand or something, okay? Ah, you want to ask something? Okay, sorry. Yeah, we were trying to talk to you before. Can you hear us? I, okay, okay. You want to ask? Can you hear us? Uh, the problem is that there is a, a lot of delay. It's normal. But okay, so otherwise, uh, can you see the chat? Mm. Ah. I... If not, we can leave the question for the end. Yeah, I can see, but I, I, I left the, no, it's a problem, I think. Eh? 
Let me finish and, and then you ask. Yeah, we, we, we can leave the question for the end. Okay. Okay. So let's go to the, the part one. Okay, I, I will talk about the long time regime of the out of time order correlators. Okay. Okay, the, the out of time order correlator were, was first uh, used or, or described by Larkin and Ovchivnikov in the 69. And then in 2016, Maldacena and co workers show that this, this object this, this, uh, can have a relation with chaos. And uh, many people of different uh, areas, of different uh, high energy physics and uh, quantum chaos, and start to uh, study this, this uh, OTOX. The OTOX are essentially the uh, modulus square of the commutator of two operators. One of the operator is evolved in time, and the other not. And in general, people consider that the operators are local, okay? And the mean value is taken in a thermal state. During the whole my talk, I will use an, 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 an thermal state with infinite temperature, okay? And one of the, the interesting, one of the, the very nice properties of these OTOX is that people can measure in several, uh, with several experimental techniques uh, uh, as an NMR, as a trapped ion, okay? Other important characteristic of the OTOX is that it's a measure of quantum information or information scrambling. There is a clear relation of the talk with the Lush Mikeko because there is a, a backward evolution in the definition of the talk. So there is a it's it's both it's perf, it's possible to relate the talk with the Lush Mikeko. There is a relation with the talk with thermalization. And one in, very interesting property is that there is a bound to chaos that was found by Malacena and co-workers that is related with the temperature of the initial state. Let me, let me start showing a very naive picture about the relation of the atop with chaos. And essentially, if I take the as operator E as the, as the position operator and B as a, as a momentum operator, and I make the semi-classical approximation of the commutator with the Poisson bracket, I found that the OTOC is given, is, is given by exponential growth and uh, the, the rate of the growth is given by the Lyapunov exponent. Okay, the Lyapunov exponent is a classical measure of chaos. Okay, so the, this short time growth of the talk has been proposed, proposed for many people as a many body as a as a measure of quantum chaos. Okay, but there are uh, the, the this exponential time short time growth is not universal. For example. If, if, I, if the system is completely integrable, but has a unstable periodic orbits, okay, that some people show, call saddles, we can see that the top grows for a short time as exponentially, okay? For example, if I take this system that is completely integrable and an initial state in this, saddle point, and I compute the talk, I will find that the, uh, the talk grows exponentially. This, this, uh, this point was uh, highly discussed in the last two years for many people. Okay, there is a, a, a big literature about this. I, I'm not interested in that. Okay, but I only, I want to point out that there is a discussion about the universality 
of the relation between the short exponential growth and chaos, okay? So what we, we ask is there are another signatures of chaos in the autog behavior, okay? And to ask this, this uh, question, let's first see the behavior, the general behavior of the autog, okay? Of a bound system, okay? And we can divide the, 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 the behavior of the autog in essentially in three regimes, okay? The short time, this is a picture, okay? When you, you can see that there is a short time growth, okay? Then there is an approach to saturation. And after the saturation, there is a, a oscillations around the saturation, okay? So we, our, our strategy always is the same. We, we take very simple system, okay? Complex, but simple as, as, as quantum, as for example, maps or spin change. And we try to understand the behavior of the talk in this system. Okay, we found very interesting res uh, results in all these regimes. Oh, I don't have time to, to explain every, everything. For example, we show analytically that the short time growth for the paradigmatic CAD map, this is one of the first uh, chaotic, classical system and quantum that people study a lot. And we show analytically that the short, that there is an exponential Lyapunov regime for short time. More important is that we show in maps that the approach to saturation is given by the Ruel polycott resonance. The Ruel polycott resonance, in general, we think that the chaos is related with expansion, okay? But the, the other characteristic of chaos is the mixing, okay? The mixing, the, the, the quantity that describes the mixing, the mixing is the real polycott resonance. And we show in maps that this approach to saturation is given by the uh, real polycott resonance, okay? The approach to saturation. Of course, we show this, this regime for quantum maps. This was a very simple system because the real polycott resonance are very complex objects that are very difficult to, for example, in billiards, I think nobody knows how to compute, okay? Uh, okay, but today, and, and you can find these, these two results in this, in this paper, uh, that uh, appeared two years ago. But today, I want to show you that the long time regime of the talk is, has very important information about the, the chaoticity, the, the chaos transition of the system. So let's, let's start with a, with a, with a, a numeric calculation to give you some idea of what we, we, what we want to understand. Again, this is the phase space of a, this is a map, classical map. Okay, here the system is integrable, then it's, it's mixed and this is chaotic. And here in the, in the panel, in this panel that I am showing you with the cursor, we can see the OTOC, the long time regime of the OTOC in this, for these three systems, okay? When the system is integrable, what we can see is that the talk has a very huge oscillation with very uh, uh, amplitude. The amplitude is, is very big, okay? And if the system is mixed, the amplitude is small. And for the chaotic case, essentially, we don't see any oscillations, okay? Look at the, this is the short time. The short time here we, we see the, the, the red curve is the uh, Lyapunov. We can see the Lyapunov regime for the, the chaotic case. But of course, this is for only three time steps, okay? But I'm computing here for thousands of time steps, the long time regime, okay? 
And you can see that there is a connection between the chaoticity and the amplitude of the oscillation. I can do the same, for example, for a spin change, okay? But in a spin change, we don't have a, a, a semi-classical limit, okay? We don't know which is the classical limit of the, of the spin change. But we know what is, is uh, quantum chaos. And if we take a spin change in which the statistical of uh, the spectral statistic is given by Wigner Dyson distribution, essentially there, there are no oscillations. And if the statistic, the spectral statistic is, is Poissonian, then we obtain huge oscillation. So we obtain in this system that there is no semi-classic, we obtain this apparently the same systematic. So let's study such a systematic, okay? Uh, so we we want to we want to measure the we we we, we take some uh, time window. In this time window, we compute the mean value of the talk, and then we compute the amplitude of, of, of oscillations. Okay, this is our first measure, and the and the second measure is. We compute the Fourier transform of the of the long time regime, and we compute the localization. Okay, these bo both measures uh, give us the same information. Okay, the quantum chaos indicator that we use to compare with this long time regime of the talk are the usual. Okay, that people use. We 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 want to consider the nearest neighbor distribution. Okay, you know the nearest neighbor distribution. We study the, we compute this, the separation of the neighbor levels. And if the system is, is, is integrable, this, this uh, uh, distribution, the distribution of the nearest neighbor is of Poisson type. And if the system is chaotic, is of Wigner type, okay? And to consider the transition from one to other, there are many ways to do it. One is the Brody distribution. The Brody distribution is a, is a, is a distribution that, that depends on a parameter. And when the, this parameter is one, you have the, the, the big nerdizo distribution. If the parameter is beta, is zero, you have integrability. Other way to, to, to gauge such a transition in quantum mechanics is the very Romnick distribution. It's essentially the same. Is, is another distribution that has one parameter, but this distribution is better semi-classically founded, okay? And more recently, people study the ratio between two neighbors, neighbor, okay? That some people call air distribution. And what is interesting of this, this uh, distribution is that they have the advantage that we do not, do not require the energy unfolding, okay? And again, we can define a parameter that gives the transition from integrable to chaos, okay? Because essentially this distribution has this value when the, the, the statistic is Poisson and this one when, the when, when we have a, a bigner Tyson distribution, okay? And another way to compute the, 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 the chaoticity is uh, with the localization of the states, okay? We, we, we take a base and we compute the inverse participation ratio. And we know from random math theory that uh, the, for completely delocalized uh, system, when, when you have chaos, the, this, this IPR is D over three, okay? So, Let's go. So the, the plan now is to compare the quantum chaos measure with the uh, autoc long time measures in first in system that we know the, the classical limit that has a classical limit. Okay, the quantum maps. And these are the results. In the in in here you can see the quantum chaos measure. One is the the, the Brody parameter. Okay, and the other is the localization. The system is integrable, and then you have chaos. 
And this one is the otok. We measure the, uh, the amplitude of the oscillations, okay? It's, it's one over the amplitude, okay? We, we can, if the, if the system has integrability, the amplitudes are, are big. So one over this is small and for chaos is big, okay? And you can see that there is a qualitative relation between both measures, okay? And now we can ask if there is some connection of these measures, because in this system we have a classical limit. We can ask if there is a, a, a classical measure that connects both measures, both quantum measures. And the answer is yes, okay? We develop a method to compute the area of, of the chaotic area and the regular area, okay? Essentially, what we measure is the time that the initial condition go from the initial condition to, to pass very near to from, from its initial condition. And depending on this time, we can know if the system, if this initial condition is in the regular area or is in the chaotic area, okay? And here, is the phase space with different color is the time, okay? We measure this time and we can see here that there, are, there is chaos and in, in, in yellow, there is integrability, okay? And we can see that there are a small signature of integrability in this uh, chaotic sea also, okay? So here I show you the, this is the, the quantum chaos, the, the, the spectral statistic for the map. And in red, I show you the area of the chaotic region. And it's a relation between this uh, quantum measure with this classical measure. And more importantly, the otok here is connected with one over the area of the regular region, okay? You can see here, the red is completely classical. But you can ask, you can you can you can ask here, for example, there is a bump. Okay, there is something classically happened, but the quantum mechanically doesn't see. Okay, but if I enlarge the 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 number of states in the Hilbert space, and I compute again the the oscillation of the talk, the talk can see this bump. Okay. And you can ask, what is this? What happened classically there? And this is the answer. Here, the system is, is chaotic. And suddenly appear four islands, very small island. And you can see that the otok can see this very thin island, okay? So what we, what we show here is that the otok is a better measure of, of the, uh, chaoticity in some sense. But now, okay, we, we, we connect everything with in, in a system. We, we made this the same calculation for other maps and everything works nice. But the point now is, is we try to, to do the same, but in system that there, there are no classical limit, okay? For example, a uh, spin change. Let's study the same in a spin change. We consider a spin change, okay? And we compute the talk. We compute one of the operator is the spin operator in one side, and the other operator is the, a spin operator in the other side, in other side. And we study these otoks for the spin chain. For example, in the perturb x x zeta model. Okay, this 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 uh, model, this spin change has two parts. One one part has a nearest neighbor interaction, and the other part that give the chaoticity is the next nearest neighbor interaction. Okay, this is the 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 the, the H zero. Okay, when when we have only nearest neighbor interaction, and this is the H one. Okay, and this is the results. In the upper panel, you can see the quantum chaos measure. Essentially, there is integrability and approximately here at 0.5, K 
chaos appear, okay? Both measures, one is the lo localization of the eigenstate and the other is the Brody parameter. And here in the, in the inset, we compute the L distribution and we compute the, um, the, the Verdi Robnik distribution. And we can see that essentially all the spectral measure give the same result. And again, the OTOC also see this transition. The OTOC growth up to some time, then there is a plateau. Essentially in the same point, okay, that, we, that the spectral measure show that the chaos appear, okay? We can, we, we did the, the, the same calculations for other, other spin change, for example, this, uh, the Heisenberg spin change with a random magnetic field, okay? Essentially, the, the, this is an easy chain with, when we include a, a magnetic field that is in each, in each side, there is a random, okay? A, a random number, and these are the results. In the upper panel, you can see the quantum chaos measure, and in the low panel, we can see the uh, OTOC long time oscillation. And you can see that the OTOC can see the integrability to chaos transition. And, and now the, the question is, okay, the OTOC, the long time regime is a very good, uh, apparently a very good quantity to measure such a transition. But we ask if our measure can see the transition in an experiment. And in an experiment, we cannot go as we, 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 we do a, a numeric calculation, we can, we, we can evolve whatever time we want. If we want to do an experiment, in an experiment you have the coherence. So the window, is not so long, okay? And we want to see what happened if the window, it's, it's not so big, and what happened if the number of particles are not so big also. And there is, an, there is a paper in NMR in 2016 when people uh, measure in a, in a, in a in a nuclear magnetic resonance simulator, they essentially measure the OTOC, okay? They, they, they make a simulation, they compute the OTOC for this uh, spin chain, okay? This spin chain has two parameters, okay? Is one of the parameters is zero, the, 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 this uh, spin chain is, is uh, integrable, but if we have, the, the, the both value G, the, the, this is a, essentially a magnetic field in X direction, and this is a magnetic field in the Z direction. If G and H are not zero, the system has the possibility to have chaos, okay? So is this, uh, this, this plot is from the, from the paper, from the paper uh, that, uh, in the last uh, slide. And you can see here, when the system is integrable, we can see huge oscillations in the OTOC, okay? The, 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 the continuous line in the simulation and the, and the points are the experiments, okay? That are very nice, but not for so long. The times are, are small, okay? Are short times, essentially, but we can see, in this case, there, there are huge oscillations. And in the, in the, in the non-integrable case, okay, when both, parameters are different from zero, we can see that the oscillation are very small. So our question is, let's see if our systematic works in this system that is small, because essentially the Hilbert space has only 16 levels, very small. And we want to use the times that people make the experiment, okay? So we consider our measures, but for very small times, okay? We consider the, the window that 
we see in the paper. And these are the results. This is the talk. The, the dash lines is the result for a long time. And the other curves are for times of the order of the experiment. And you can see again, integrability, chaos, and integrability, OK? But in this case, the Hilbert space is only 16, only 16 levels. And this, and this are, sorry, these are the results for the, the, the statistics. We, 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 may, we make the spectral statistic, okay, the, the quantum chaos measure, but not for a system of 16 level because it's impossible. We take a huge a, a spin change of, of 14 uh, spins and we compute the, uh, the quantum chaos measure. And you can see that essentially our measure in this very small system can, can see the transition from integrability to chaos to integrability. Okay, so, but now the next question is in, in general, people in NMR, what is easy to measure is to measure global operators, okay? Magnetic field, okay? For example, the total spin in zeta direction or in x direction or whatever, global operators. So we ask, we, 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 we want to see if the systematic that local operators see in the long time of the talk, the global operator also show this systematic. And the answer is, is we, we, the, the, the global operator, the, the global talk of two global operators, we can divide in two parts. One is the sum of the local autogs and one non-local. And we compute for, for, for this chain, okay? This is the local, the local operator. And, we can, and this is the spectral measure. You can see that the local operator, of course, this is what I, I show in the last slides, but the non-local doesn't see the, the, the transition, okay? So the talk are very nice, the long time regime of the talk are very nice measure of the quantum chaos transition only for local operators, okay? Okay, let's go to the part number number two. Okay, now I'm I'm gonna discuss the same the same ideas, but in in an open system. Okay, and the the relation between chaos and the coherence uh, was uh, studied a lot for many people in the 90s, okay? Surek, Paz, and other people try to understand the effect of the coherence, okay, of chaos in the coherence, essentially, okay? When you have an open system. But in this, in this, uh, in this works, the people essentially take a system that has a semi-classical limit that is chaotic, okay? And a simple environment, in general, a, 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 an environment that is a, a, a collection of harmonic oscillators, okay, with some spectral density, okay. And they, in general, study this setup for short times and non-chaotic, non-chaotic environments. We want to do another business, okay. We our idea is the following. We want to take a small system. We want to, to com use, to, to, we want to, to measure, for example, the purity of one of the spins, okay? And we want to measure the purity and we want to know if this purity gives inform information about the chaoticity of, a long bath 
with the same type of interactions. Okay, this is our idea. It's, it's, it's like a chaos meter. Okay, this is what, what we want to know. Okay, so the question in this part is can small environment tell something about the case of a big environment? What is the effect of small environment to the system? Okay. And what is the relation with control? Okay, we are, I'm gonna address this question in, in the last minute. Okay. So let's start with the with this uh, uh, chain. Okay. This change, this chain is the same that I use in the when I try to understand the experiment, okay, the NMA experiment, okay. The, this this uh, this uh, chain has two, two two parameters, okay, related with the magnetic field in the x direction and in the in the theta direction, okay, and, and an easing part, okay. And we consider an initial state. The, the, firstly, we consider an initial state that is a product state, in which each spin in a, is in a, in a random direction, okay? And we compute, sorry, we compute the purity of the first spin, okay? We compute the, 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 the uh, density matrix of the, the reduced density matrix of the first spin, we measure and then measure the purity, okay? And we compute this purity for a long time, Okay, we, we, and we compute the mean value of this, of this purity. And then we make some average in initial state. Okay, this is what I, I will show you. Essentially, this is two numerical examples. We compute the purity, okay, in this first spin. And then we take, for, for example, for this 100 times, and we compute the average. And this is our measure, okay? And we normalize to compare with the chaotic measure, okay? We, we, we normalize, but it, this is not important. And these are the results, okay? These are the results. The black curve is the quantum chaos measure, okay? This is one over eta, the air distribution, okay? This is, this is a spectral measure, okay? We have to diagonalize the spin of 14 uh, spins, so the phase, the, the Hilbert space is, is a, more than 16,000 levels. We ha, this system has a, has a symmetry. So we have to take into account the symmetry. So we have to, to, to divide the, the, the Hilbert space in two. And then we have to make the spectral statistic with one part. And, we have, and then we compute this for several values of the parameter H theta of the Hamiltonian, okay? This is the Hamiltonian here. We change this parameter. This Hx is fixed, okay? In one, I think. And what we can see here is the system is integrable. Then the system is, is chaotic. And again, we have integrability, okay? And now we compute the purity the mean value of the purity for the, the a spin change of length 12. Okay, we obtain exactly the same result. This is not quantitative. We obtain very nice relation, works very nice. But if we compute for nine, then for six, and for three, for only three spins in the environment with eight, uh, the, this environment, the Hilbert space has only, only eight states. And we can see that describe very nice the quantum chaos transition, okay? And more important, or, or very important, in this case, we don't have to take into account the, 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 the symmetry, okay? We don't have to, 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 to divide the Hilbert space with the symmetry. We, we use everything and works perfect. Okay, so you can ask if 
maybe we we have uh, lucky we, we we were lucky and this is a casualty you know maybe this this is not true for other system okay let's discuss the universality let's take an easing change with a, with tilt magnetic field okay we have a magnetic field when we, we can change the angle of magnetic field and this system has a, again a, a a, a transition from integrability to chaos. Again, this is the spectral measure, the black curve. And for three spins in the environment, again, our the purity works perfect to see this transition. Other, other, other chain, Heisenberg with random magnetic field. Okay, again. For three spins, is more. There is there are uh, some noise, but again, the the we can see where here is chaotic, and here and here is integrable. Again, with three spins works very nice. The perturb x x zeta model again perfect, and here we can see the dispersion we, we we can see the dispersion of our salt with the, the the width of the of the of the line and we can see that the dispersion is is not big okay so our our chaos meter were very nice okay we consider different setup, sensing setup we consider the case in which the the the, the hamiltonian of the proof is zero. We neglect the intrinsic Hamiltonian, and again we obtain very nice result. Okay. So we 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 can see that that the purity of a local part of the system is a very nice me uh, measure of the quantum chaos transition. And now. We go to the to the last part of, 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 of my talk. I want to know what happened with control. Okay. Remember that I, I start the, the question number four, I think. I ask what happened with the with the, the control. Okay. And okay, I want to control the system. Okay, the spin chain. I want to address the first spin or the first and the second or, or the third and the two or whatever. And as I said, the other, the reminder part of the change is the environment of my spin. So to understand what is the, the relation between chaos and control, we make the following uh, calculation. We take the, the, the same spin change, the first one, okay, and we include a control, uh, a magnetic field in the first spin, okay? And this, this, this is a, this depend on a function that we, we, we optimize to obtain what we want to obtain, okay? For example, if we want to do a state transfer, we change this, this, this function to obtain the, 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 the fidelity that we want, okay? I will, I will show you. Okay, so this is the external control. Okay, so the protocols that we want to, to study are the following. The first one is we want to start with the, the first spin in the state zero, and we want to go the target state is that the, the state of the, of the spin one is one. Okay, at the end. And the other protocol that we want to, to do is to start with the, the product state of this product state of the state zero, and we want to, for, for the, the first two spins, and we want to end with this bell state, okay? Okay, and let's see, uh, of course, we, we, we make only one realization, okay, of this control strategy, we use, we obtain, this, this function eta dt, we obtain with the usual method of quantum control, for example, grape, okay, then in which we use 
the gradient of the uh, the figure of merit okay in this case in for state transfer is essentially the the initial state the target state and the evolution operator in the middle that depend on the eta okay so we take an, a, an initial function of and we apply uh, coherent control and we obtain the uh, a, a, a function to to uh, when when the fidelity is good enough and these are the results okay this is the the best fidelity that we obtain as a function of the chaos parameter okay of the parameter here we have more chaos so and what we see is that the control work worst when the system is integrable we can find better fidelities we we did this for for this protocol one for uh, nine spins or for uh, six spins uh, we essentially obtain the same and this is the final fidelity as a function of the par the chaos parameter and we can see that decrease okay more chaos worst control okay that of course if you if you know the first part of my talk you say it, it is pretty obvious okay and the same happened for the second protocol okay for the uh, the entanglement of the two two spins of the first two spins okay so we are arriving to the final remarks Essentially, what I show is that the long time regime of the talk and the purity are very nice quantity to describe the integrability to chaos transition. Point two, small system, system of very few uh, states in the Hilbert space, see this integrability to chaos transition. Why? We don't know. And we try to understand because it's really it's 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 very, it's really interesting that why this small system has has some memory of a big of a big system okay this is completely strange and we want to know why and this is an open question and one of the 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 the, the, the conclusion is of course it's better to control systems in which the the local environment is integral okay with, with no chaos okay so if, if you if you talk with an experimentalist and you have a spin chain you have to say take a take care about if, if the local environment is chaotic your your control work worst okay and these are the 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 the, the reference of the of, of the in the, in the first part, I talk about these two papers. This paper was done by Emiliano Fortes, Ignacio Garcia Mata, and Rodolfo Chalabert. Okay, this is for the long time of the talk, and this is the preprint that was done by Nicolas Mirkin. Is the second part of my talk, and when about the this is paper that I show you about the short time in the Abuna regime for, for, for the talks in the, in the CAD map. And this is our group in, in Buenos Aires. Nicolás Mirkin is doing a PhD. Martín La Roca is doing a PhD. Emiliano Fortes and Tomás Notenson uh, applied for a grant for uh, the next year, probably they, they will start a PhD in the group. And I always said the same uh, joke that nobody understands that this is our guru. And uh, I don't know if you understand, but okay. So thanks for your attention. Hey, thanks and a lot I, for this. I will, parade. sorry, but there, there is a, an incredible. Um, yeah, th thanks a lot for this great talk. For me, I didn't understand the joke at the end. Um, I'll just ask the questions and hopefully we'll manage to make it work even with the delay. If that doesn't work, I'll just post them in the chat and you can read them there. That's all right. So I think the first question is from Leia Santos. When you showed one of your first figures showing the OTOC as a measure for quantum chaos, 
the presence of oscillations or not, then doesn't that repent, result also depend on the initial state? Well, the question, the, yeah, yeah, I understand. The, the answer of this question is results that we shown is for initial state that is a thermal state with infinite temperature, okay? What we want to do is we want to understand what happened if we change the temperature. We use another temperature, but we don't know. Um, then there's a uh, next question. When you compared in the this classical model, this dip in the OTOC with these integrable orbits, how exactly do you know that this dip in the OTOC corresponds to some regular classical orbits? Can you repeat? Yeah. How do you know that the dip in the OTOC corresponds to some regular classical orbits? I think it was one in your next slides. Okay, this is yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. This one. Okay. You want to know if I understand well, you want to know why I'm sure we are sure that the 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 this dip is related with the appearance of this this orbit. It it's it's if if you if you change h bar, if you if you if, if, if sorry, the, the delay is impossible. If you change h bar, it's, it's like you change your microscope, okay? And if you change your microscope, you are looking at uh, uh, details more fine, okay? And this is what we, we did, okay? In this case, we see, we, you can see, this is the long time regime for two values of h bar, okay? For the small case, okay, we can see that the otok see the, the bump. For when, for when, when the, the number of state is 600, you don't see, okay? And if you continue enlarging, you, you see more, more, more. Uh, we study all this stuff in, in detail, okay? We, we change h bar and we can see more detail in the, in the, in the we, we can the talk see more detail in the uh, face of the classical face space. Okay, thanks. I don't know if I answer. We'll eventually find out. Uh, I have an additional question about the end of your talk. If you introduce additional quantum control, this means adding some interest. Okay, not just some additional term to your Hamiltonian, which might also influence if it's integrable or chaos. So do you expect that to also play a role in quantifying how chaotic your system is? Okay, I understand the question. In this case, we, in this case, uh, the point is if uh, we change the, the, the chaoticity of the system. Well, we, we didn't study to the, the spectral statistic, including the, this, this term, but I, I think it will not affect the because it, it's it's a local part so you can include here no in the in the yes but it's a bit annoying with a delay but then you effectively change the parameter of your hamiltonian which should have which could have some effect on the ergodicity or chaos 
you, you also hear the, 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 the echo. It's amazing. I, I don't hear it. It's, it's my problem or it's... It... Yeah, but neither Pablo nor I are having that problem. Okay, so actually, I, th I think this might conclude the questions for this week's talk. Um, okay, S sorry. No problem. Your, people are thanking you in the chat for this great talk. And as a reminder, we'll be back next week with another Quantum Chaos Seminar, this time given by Monica Schleier-Smith from Stanford. And we'll be giving it on a special day. So instead of Thursday, the seminar will be on Tuesday. Same time though, it's time. And she'll be talking about optically programmable interactions for quantum simulation. If you want to get updates or mails, just subscribe to the mailing list or subscribe to this YouTube channel. So thanks a lot for watching everyone. See you.